Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 9, 2022. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's Major League Baseball and WNBA games and look ahead to today's games in each sport. Then I'm going to make some predictions for key NBA games for the 2022-23 season. Then I'm going to predict how the primaries are going to go for today. There's key ones in Vermont, Minnesota, Connecticut, and Wisconsin. News and notes and best bet. We're going to start with Major League Baseball. We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to the games being played today. There was only seven games last night, if I'm not mistaking. Um, yes, there were seven. Orioles over the Blue Jays, 7-4. The to to Orioles are 57-52. Toronto, 16-49. Jordan Alice, the win. You say Kikuchi Deluxe and Felix Bautista, the save. Homers in this game. Ramon Urias. Kayvon Biggio. Um, Anthony Santander. Ryan Mountcastle. Mount Chapman. And Austin Hayes. Mets over the Reds. 5-1. to The Mets 71-39. and Cincy 44-64. Chris Bass with the win. And Justin Dunn the loss. The only homer in this game was a two-run shot in the bottom of the first by Starling Marte. Cubs over the Nationals, 6-3. Best bet was a winner. Cubs are 44-64. Washington's 36-75. Keegan Thompson win. Annabelle Sanchez, the loss. And getting the save for Chicago is Rowan Wick. Homers in this game. Um, the DH for the Cubs, Nelson Velasquez. Um, the third baseman, Christopher Morell. Luke Voigt from Washington and... A pinch hit homer by Joey Manessis from Washington. Thompson, six innings, five hits, earned runs, no walks, three strikeouts, zero three point three six. And Annabelle Sanchez, five innings, seven hits, four and runs, two walks, three strikeouts, seven point five six zero. And by the way, the Orioles, Blue Jays, um, Lyles, five and two thirds, eight hits, two earned runs, two walks, and a K. And Kukuchi, five innings, six six five earned runs. Three rocks, four strikeouts. Um, Bassett was tremendous for New York. Eight innings, eight hits. No one runs a walk, eight strikeouts. And Cincy, Justin Dunn, four and two thirds, five hits, three runs, two walks, two strikeouts. Angels over the Athletics, one nothing. Good thing I didn't pick that for best bet. LA is 47-63. Oakland, 41-69. Jose Suarez, the win. Clarvin, the lost. And getting the save was Ryan Tapera. The lone run in this game was in the top of the first inning. A home run. By Luis Rangifo. At Suarez, seven innings, two hits, no one runs, two walks, eight strikeouts. And Irvin, eight innings, five hits, and no run, no walks, six strikeouts. He would have been a good trade pickup, Cole Irvin. I think some teams missed out on him. D backs over the Pirates, three nothing. D backs, 49 and 59. Pittsburgh's 44 and 65. Zach Allen, the win. Manny Benuelos, the loss. Ian Kennedy, the save. Um, no homers in this game. Um, Gallon seven innings, three hits, no one runs, two walks, eight strikeouts. Yuri three point one two. Tyler B three two thirds, two hits, no one runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. Part of me wonders if there is an injury to beat in this game. Another one nothing score. Giants over the Padres. Um, San Fran fifty four and fifty five, sixty one fifty one. It's the Padres record. The Padres have lost a couple in a row. Alex Wood, the win, he's 8-9. Blake's now the loss, 4-6. And, and getting the save, his 15th, Camilo Duvall. Um, Lone run came on a sack fly by Thyro Estrada. Um, Wood, 6 in the third, 3 hits. No one runs, no walks, 5 strikeouts. The is 4.17. Snell, 5 and 2 thirds, 6 hits. And a run, 2 walks, 8 strikeouts. He was pretty good. His ERA now is 3.96. And the Yankees end their 5-game losing streak with a 9-4 win over the Mariners. They're 71-39. Seattle's 59-52. Jamison Tyon, the win. Luke, uh, Logan Gilbert, the loss. A lot of homers in this game. Mitch Haneker, Josh Donaldson, Cam, or Cal Riley, and Aaron Judge. By the way, Judge, that was his 44th of the year. Tyon, 7 innings, 3 hits, 3 runs, 2 walks, 6 strikeouts, the race, 3.95. Logan Gilbert, 40 cents, 7 and runs, a walk, 2 strikeouts, the race is ballooned to 3.47. All right, now today's games 
Four o'clock doubleheader game one between the White Sox and the Royals. I wonder if this is a makeup game from earlier in the year. Lance Lynn against Brady Singer. I'm interested to see what the lines are for this game. Um, it's not out yet. But if Chicago's favor, I'm taking the Royals. The Royals are 52.6 to win, according to ESPN Analytics. 7 o'clock, you have the Marlins at the Phillies. Braxton Garrett and Zach Wheeler. Phillies minus 255. Marlins plus 210 over under 7.5. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. Marlins plus 1.5 is even money. Phillies minus 1.5 is minus 120. I'm going with the under. This is a really good pitching matchup. Um, Braxton Garrett's been better, and Zach Wheeler's been money for Philly. Blue Jays, Orioles, Alec Manoa, and Kyle Bradish. Blue Jays minus 158, Orioles plus 134, over under 8.5, overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Blue Jays minus 1.5 is even money, Orioles plus 1.5 is minus 120. Um, I like the under in this game too, I think this could be like 6-1 Toronto. Braves Red Sox on TBS, Charlie Morton and Rich Hill. Braves minus 156. Red Sox plus 132 over under 9.5. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. Braves minus 1.5 is even money. Red Sox plus 1.5 is minus 120. Um, Party wants to pick the Red Sox out, right? They're 45.4 according to ESPN Analytics. So plus 132 is a decent number. Um, For this one, I am going to go with the over, actually. Reds Mets. Mike Miner and Carlos Carrasco. Mets minus 335. Reds plus 270 over under 8.5. Overs minus 112. Unders minus 108. Reds plus 1.5 is plus 126. Mets minus 1.5 is minus 152. The Reds at plus 270 is insane. I know Mike Miner is so bad. There's some value there, but the Reds are just so bad. So instead, I'm going to go with the over. Guardians, Tigers, Shane Bieber, and Tyler Alexander. Guardians minus 190, Tigers plus 160, over under 7.5, overs minus 102, unders minus 120. Guardians minus 1.5, and Tigers plus 1.5 is minus 10 each way. Um, hmm. I do like the Tigers run line a little bit. A plus 1.5 and minus 110. I think that this could be a close game. So that's going to be the pick. White Sox Royals. So this is a doubleheader makeup from April 6th. So this is the makeup game from earlier in the year. We don't have pitching matchups for this game yet. 8 o'clock, you have the Nats at the Cubs. Paolo Espino and Marcus Stroman. Cubs minus 100. Nats plus 168. Over under 7F. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Nats plus 1F is minus 128. Cubs minus 1F is plus 105. Um, this is a hard one. So, for this one, I'm going to go first half over 4.5 at plus 118. Braves Brewers. Jimmy Yacobanis and Frey Peralta. Brewers minus 162. Race plus 136. Over under 8. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. Rays plus one half is minus one fifty. Brewers minus one half is plus one twenty five. Um, I like the over. Um, Rangers Astros. Martin Perez and Jose Yurdiki. Good pitching matchup. Astros minus one eighty. Rangers plus one fifty two. Over under seven half. Overs minus one eighteen. Under minus one hundred four. Rangers plus one half is minus one thirty four. Astros minus one half is plus one twelve. Astros have been on sliding a little bit. Uh, haven't taken advantage of the Yankees' big slide, though, because they've been losing a couple games, and the Yankees have been losing, so it's just luck on the Astros' part, in a way. But I do like Texas to win outright. They're 44.7, according to Spain Analytics, and they're over plus 150, so I kind of like Texas to win. Um, Cardinals, Ast- or Cardinals-Rockies. I almost said Astros. My apologies. Um, 
Miles Mikolas and Ryan Feltner. Cards minus 172. Rocks plus 144. Over under 11. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Cards minus 1 half is minus 120. Rocks plus 1 half is even money. I'm going the under. Miles Mikolas has been really good this year. He's not going to falter against the Rockies. 9.30, Angels Athletics. Shohei Otani and James Caprellian. Angels minus 130, or 184. A's plus 154 over under 6.5. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Angels minus 1.5 is minus 102. Angel, or athletics plus 1.5 is minus 118. I love the over. I mean, anything under 7, I think, is a lock. I know Otani's pitching, but the Angels bullpen ain't good. Pirates, Diamondbacks, Zach Thompson, and Tommy Henry. Um, D backs minus 152, Pirates plus 128, over under 8.5, overs minus 112, unders minus 108. Pirates plus 1.5 is minus 150, D backs minus 1.5 is plus 125. For this one, I'm going to go with the over. Um,. Giants, Padres, Alex Cobb, and Joe Musgrove. Big, big game for San Diego. They're minus 168. Giants are plus 142 over under 7.5. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 115. Giants plus 1.5 is minus 140. Padres minus 1.5 is plus 116. For this game, I like the over, too. I think that, um, I don't think Cobb's been all that great this year. Musgrove's, I think, will be better, but I don't know. I think 7.5's love for that, those teams. Twins Dodgers at 10 o'clock. Joe Ryan and Julio Urias. Dodgers minus 230. Twins plus 190. Over under 8. Overs minus 118. Unders minus 104. Twins plus 1 half is minus 108. Dodgers minus 1 half is minus 111. Twins run lines the pick. Joe Ryan um, faltering a little bit, but um, I don't know if the Twins will win, but I'm just going to say plus 1 half on the run line. I think that's close. And the Yankees at the Mariners. Garrett Cole against Luis Castillo. So these two guys faced off against each other. Um, at Yankee Stadium last week where Cole gave up six runs in the first inning. Yanks are minus one th- four. Seattle's plus one fourteen over under seven. Over is minus one hundred five. Under is minus one fifteen. Yanks minus one half is plus one thirty two. Seattle plus one half is minus one sixty. I like the over. Yankee offense is back. Um... I won't be shocked if Castillo gets roughed up this time. This is their third time facing Castillo this year. Once with the Reds and then the Mariners. He was good against them both times. Third time's a charm for the Yankee offense, which is uh, kind of rolling right now, even though they lost Matt Carp and they're Maybe they get Anthony Rizzo back tonight. I think Cole bounces back, though, a little bit. But um, I do like the over a lot. All right, so there you have it for baseball. We'll move on to the WNBA now. Um, we'll go over the results from yesterday, and we have some big games today as the playoffs approach us. The Wings, def- uh, the Wings defeat the Liberty, eighty-six to seventy-seven. Dallas is seventeen, sixteen New York, thirteen, twenty. So the Wings clinch a playoff spot. Uh, Marina Mabry, 31 points and 4 assists. And Sabrina Ionescu, 32 points, 7 boards, 4 assists. All right, three games. 8 o'clock, NBA TV of the Storm at the Sky. Um, That is a game that um, both of these teams have clinched. Sky are favored by 4.5 totals, 163 and a half. Um. So uh, Chicago needs the game to clinch the one seed. Seattle is in the battle for home court in the first round. Um, This is a tough one, but I'm going to go Seattle getting the four and a half just so I know they're trying for home court. 10 o'clock, you have the Dream at the Aces. The Dream um, are locked into that seven spot right now, um, tied with Phoenix, Minnesota Liberty, and Sparks all game back. Um. Vegas is favored by 11 half totals, 167 half. These are narrative plays for the most part. I'm taking Atlanta getting the points. They need this game really bad. And 10.30 on NBA TV of the Sun at LA. The Sun are favored by 8 half totals, 158 and a half. The LA needs this game bad. Um, 
Connecticut can get the two seed. Um, I know Vegas won the Commissioner's Cup. But Connecticut's still in play for the two seed, so they're playing for that. Um, L.A., one game back of eighth. I'm going to take L.A. getting the eight and a half at home against Connecticut. All right, now I'm going to make predictions for key NBA games for this upcoming season. Um, The schedule should be out next week. I want to have Ryan Berger on the podcast to do NBA schedule with me, and then uh, we'll talk about the captain the last episode since he's a Yankees fan as well. So um, that would be a good person to have on to talk about the NBA schedule and subplots and Kevin Durant and all that crap. Um, All right, so to these predictions. So opening night, usually you have two games, an East Coast and the West Coast. And usually on opening night, you have the team that won the championship um, getting their rings. I do think that's the case. So, since it was the Golden State Warriors that won the title, they're giving the nightcap. And their opponent, my guess, will be the Los Angeles Clippers. Yes, the Clippers, not the Lakers. Um, My case is that um, Kawhi and Paul George back, um, they get just as much favoritism as the Lakers do in the schedule sometimes, um, especially when they're good. Um, and they're good. They're going to be good. I feel like they're going to be a popular pick to come out of the West this year against the Warrior team that um, just won the title for the fourth time in the last decade. So that would be a great game. And then, obviously, the first half of the doubleheader, I'm going to predict the reigning Eastern champion Celtics hosting... The Milwaukee Bucks, a team that many people think that would have won the championship had Chris Middleton not gotten injured. So that's a good um, little what if. So first night of the season at seven thirty on TNT, Bucks at the Celtics, and ten o'clock on TNT, Clippers at Golden State. All right, on October twenty sixth, that's the Wednesday. ESPN doubleheader, 7.30. I'm going to say the Nets at the Knicks. Um, And this is banking on Kevin Durant still being in Brooklyn. Um, And if Durant's traded, then that game is going to get booted for something else. Or maybe not, because maybe the Nets will have Jimmy Butler on their team. Or they'll have, like, Pascal Siakam on their team. They Maybe they'll have Jalen Brown on their team. Ben Simmons might still be on their team. Kyrie Irving might still be on the team. Against the Nick team that's looking to bounce back after a disappointing year last year. And then this latter half of the doubleheader, the Suns at the Lakers. And you can bank your buck that Mike Breen and company are going to be at Nets-Knicks because they usually give favoritism to the Knicks, like, with Mike Breen. So, um, you know that's going to be the case. So, him and Jeff Van Gundy will be at Nets, Knicks, and then, like, Ryan Rucco or Mark Jones and Mark Jackson are going to be at Suns-Lakers. And Suns-Lakers, obviously, the Suns, the team had the best record in the NBA last year against a Laker team like the Knicks, looking to bounce back from a disappointing season. The Lakers were the most disappointing team in the league last year, by far. I mean, LeBron James is still decent at basketball, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the Thursday night TNT doubleheader, um, 7.30, um, Hawks at the Heat, so Trey Young at Miami, good division rival, and then 10 o'clock TNT would be Mavericks at Nuggets, so Luka at Jokic. That's a lot of fun. Um, October 28th, that's the Friday night, ESPN doubleheader, 7.30, Bucks at the 76ers, so Philly home opener. And then uh, Milwaukee on the road again. And at Chris, oh, not Christmas Day, um, one more, that off a doubleheader. Um, Lakers at the Clippers. Um, Clippers home opener against the Lakers. Um, 
Lakers Clippers is always the first week of the season. Everyone predicts it. I every year I feel like it's predicted, reported as a Laker home game. The schedule comes out. Oh, it's a Clipper home game. So they're always incorrect about that. So the Clippers got the home game here against the Lakers. Now Christmas Day. All right. So the twelve o'clock game on ESPN Heat Knicks. I call that the MSG Invitational, where the Knicks host whomever. It's usually an Eastern Conference rival on Christmas Day, and this time I have the Miami Heat. 2.30 ABC, 76ers at the Bucks. That'd be a really fun game on Christmas. I think it was Bucks celtics on Christmas, or 76ers Celtics on Christmas last year. I don't remember. But Embiid against Giannis on Christmas Day would be a lot of fun. I was tempted to pick Philly home, but I have Bucks at 76ers. Opening Friday. That's why I decided to do 76ers Bucks on Christmas. And I think the Bucks deserve a home game on Christmas. Because I feel like Philly had a home game on Christmas last year. Or two years ago. Or two years ago. I don't remember. I have to look at the uh, the history. Oh, with that. Um, 5 o'clock ABC. Rematch of last year's primetime Christmas Day game. Lakers at the net, so this time at the Barclays Center. So that'd be pretty cool. But I wouldn't be shocked if the Nets don't play on Christmas because of the possibility of Kevin Durant not being there. 8 o'clock, prime time on ABC and ESPN. Celtics Warriors finals rematch. The finals rematch should be on Christmas every year at the team that won. That's my rule. They did it with Thunder Heat back in 2012. They've done it several other times in the past. Sometimes they've done the finals rematch, but at the team that lost. So it was Boston at Milwaukee, the Christmas game last year. So Philly was robbed of a Christmas game. And then... The nightcap, I have the Mavericks at the Clippers. Um, Luka needs to be playing on Christmas, and the Clippers are going to be really good. Apologies to uh, Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets. Apologies to Trae Young and the Hawks. Um, did not pick them for Christmas games this year. Apologies to Anthony Edwards and the Timberwolves. I not even mention their name in... Any of these picks. Apologies to the Chicago Bulls. You know um, that those teams are going to be getting a lot of attention throughout the season. But these are my picks at gunpoint of what I think the um, opening week national TV games are going to be and Christmas Day. And apologies to John Morant and the Grizzlies who probably belong on the Christmas slate as well. But I I did this based off of Kevin Durant still playing in Brooklyn. The typical favoritism towards the Knicks and the Lakers. The thought of the Clippers getting some games with um, um, Kawhi and Paul George back. And the Christmas schedule in 2020 was Pelicans, Heat, Warriors, Bucks, Nets, Celtics, Mavs, Lakers, Clippers, Nuggets. So, Philadelphia hasn't played on Christmas um, in a while. So, the last time Philly played on Christmas was they hosted Milwaukee in 2019. That's insane. Philly belongs on Christmas this year. So we'll see how this plays out. And if I get some of these right, congratulations to me. I get a pat on the back. All right, now I'll move on to primaries. Um, we have a couple key primaries to discuss. Um, we're going to do um, gubernatorials first. We'll start with Vermont. Um, your presumptive Democrat nominee, Brenda Siegel. Um, your presumptive progressive nominee, Susan Hatch Davis. 
And your Republican candidates are Stephen Bellows, Peter Duvall, and Phil Scott, who is the incumbent. And he is seeking a fourth two-year term. I think Phil Scott will win. Um, he's well known. He's the current governor. Um, Vermont is a very red state. They like Phil Scott, so I think Phil Scott will win the um, primary gubernatorial here. Um, I thought Connecticut had gubernatorial today. But um, they did not. They had it another day. But there's a couple big primaries we got to keep an eye out for. Um, we'll start with Minnesota, the first congressional district, both the regular primary and the special election. So the Republican, you have Brad Finstad, who's the former Minnesota director of USDA Rural Development and former state rep. And Jeremy Munson, who's a state rep. Um, so in terms of endorsements, um, they um, did an interesting uh, endorsements for themselves. And I think the winner of this election will be Jeremy Munson. Um, I think he's pretty well known in the state, and I think that he will win this Republican primary. And the Democratic Farmer Labor primary, um, George H. Calberer, CEO and President of the Calberer Financial Management and candidate for U.S. Senate of Washington in 2018. Jeffrey Edinger, American corporate and executive and former CEO of Hormel Foods. And James Rainwater, attorney, meditator and candidate for Minnesota's first congressional district in the special election. Um, this is going to be interesting. Um, I am going to go with Jeffrey Ettinger here to win the Democratic Farmer labor primary here for Minnesota. And the District 1 special election, the candidates are Haran McClellan of the Grassroots Legalized Cannabis Party, Richard Reitsdorf, Legal Marijuana Now Party, Brad Finstan is a Republican, and from the Democratic Farmer Labor Party, just mentioned him, Jeff Edinger. Um... So Finstan and um, Ettinger are running against each other for this one. Um, I think Ettinger is going to do a, que a clean sweep of the uh, Democratic farmer labor primary and the uh, special election. Um, Minnesota... Um, is a little bit of a mixed bag when it comes to um, politics and who they support. So I'm going to say uh, at gunpoint Jeff Ettinger, although I do think Brad Finstein has a chance here. So I'm going to go with Jeff Ettinger to win the uh, special election for District 1. All right, now we'll move on to Wisconsin. We have 
gubernatorial primary and attorney general primary. So we know that Tony Evers, the incumbent, will run on the Democratic side. And, by the way, lieutenant governor's up for grab, too. Peng Her, CEO of Hmong Institute and Sarah Rodriguez, state assemblywoman for the 13th district. I think Sarah Rodriguez is going to blow away in that one. I really do. She has so many endorsements. I think she will run away with the lieutenant governor um, primary there. In the Republican primary, Adam J. Fisher, former police officer and businessman. Rebecca Cleefish, former lieutenant governor from 2011 to 2019. Tim Michaels, co-owner of the Michaels Corporation, nominee for Senate in 2004. And Timothy Rapper, the state assemblyman for the 59th district. This is interesting. Um, I think everybody in here has done a fabulous job. From an endorsement standpoint, but because of her past and being a lieutenant governor, and I think that'll push her over the top, and that's Rebecca Cleefish. I think she's going to run away with the Republican primary. And lieutenant governor um, David D. King, businessman and perennial candidate, Will Martin, former Wisconsin Department of Workface Development official, Roger Roth, state senator from the 19th District, Patrick Teston, State Senator from the 24th District. David Varnum, Mayor of Lancaster. Sydney Werner, Businesswoman and Candidate for Wisconsin's 4th Congressional District in 2018 and 2020. Jonathan Wishman and Kyle Hughes. I think some of these people did a wonderful job getting endorsements as well. But I'm going to go with Patrick Teston. He's done the best job with his endorsements. And he's a state senator from the 24th district. That's going to help his cause. So I'm going to go with Patrick Teston to win the lieutenant governor um, nomination for the Republican Party. And now we'll do the attorney general for Wisconsin. You have your presumptive winner, the incumbent attorney general, Democrat Josh Cole. And now we await the Republican primary. There's three in play. Adam Jackro, former member of the Wisconsin State Assembly from 2015 to 2019. Karen Mueller, attorney and candidate for Wisconsin's 3rd Congressional District in 2014. And Eric Toney, um, Fond du Lac County prosecutor. Um, so I think everyone did a nice job from an endorsement standpoint. Um, but. I'm going to go with Jack Rowe, um, or Jarch Rowe. Um, he used to be on the assembly. He has a lot of good endorsements, although Eric Tony did a good job with endorsements as well. So I'm going to go with Adam Jarchow for um, the Wisconsin State Assembly here. Or, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, Attorney General. He used to be on the state assembly. That's why I had that in my head. So Adam Jarcho, I have winning the pri- Republican primary, and he'll go up against Josh Call, who is the uh, presumptive nominee and who is the uh, incumbent attorney general. All right, now we'll move on to the news and notes of the day. Um, unfortunate news yesterday. Um with the passing of Olivia Newton-John, she was 73 years old, um, 30-year battle with cancer, very sad. She's known for her role in Greece, um, working alongside John Travolta, a ton of good songs together, um, You're the One That I Want. Summer Nights, Hopelessly Devoted to You, We Go Together. You can just make a list of them. As Grease was just an incredible movie. Everybody thinks that uh, it's one of the greatest um, Broadway musicals and movies ever, which I agree it is. Um... So thoughts and prayers go out to uh, 
Newton John's family and friends and colleagues. So, um, very sad news on on this Tuesday morning as she passed um, yesterday afternoon. Um, she was engaged but never married Bruce Welsh. Um, she, um, had a couple marriages, um, but she lived a great life, and she's a very pretty woman, and it's just very sad. We've had a ton of, uh, sad passings this year, and... Now here we have another one with uh, Olivia Newton John. Um, now to sports. Um, the big news of the morning from sports: Serena Williams to retire as she announces in a Vogue essay that she's evolving away from tennis after this year's U.S. Open. So the U.S. Open is going to be her last hurrah. Um, I think. She's doing the right thing. It's time for her to hang it up. Um, she's not the same tennis player she used to be. Um, I think the best female tennis player of all time. She is the GOAT. And very, um, very sad that she's leaving the game. But we're happy that we witnessed um, a great career with Serena Williams. Um... Interesting news dropping last night and being confirmed this morning is that the New York Rangers finally name a captain, Jacob Truba. Um, this is um, not what I expected. Um, I'm happy for Truba. He's a great player, good veteran, um, great trade acquisition by the Rangers. But I think there are a couple guys on the Rangers that were snubbed. Fellow defenseman Adam Fox would have probably been my choice because he has similar qualities to Ryan McDonough and Brian Leach. So that's why I would have named him captain. I think Chris Kreider had a case because he's been around for a very long time. He was there in the Henrik Lundqvist era, and he was there when they were rebuilding, and now he's here again, or still here, when the Rangers are back in Stanley Cup contention. Minka Zavanajad, who came over in a trade six years ago already, and... It was one of the biggest highway robbery trades in Rangers history. And you could argue Artemi Panarin, who came over as a free agent in the summer of 2019. And is another big reason why uh, the Rangers uh, rebuild didn't last very long. So um, there's guys that had cases. And Panarin thinks he was snubbed, apparently. Um, But good for God. Jacob Truba, um, I think Rangers Twitter is probably irate about this. But Truba's a good player. And sometimes I feel like the Rangers like to do things outside the box. And this is definitely qualifies for outside the box. I'm curious to think what Derek thinks of this. Um, so we'll move on from uh, hockey. Um, we'll talk some football. Bears linebacker Roquan Smith requests a trade as he wants out. In a lengthy post, the new front office regime doesn't value me here, he says. Whoa. Let's see if um, they can get something good back for him. That They can recoup assets that they gave up to move up to get Justin Fields. Um, the Walter Penner Group's $4.65 billion purchase of the Broncos ex- is expected to be approved today. So that is good news for the league as the Denver Broncos has new owners. Um, Justin Tucker gets paid four-year deal, $24 million, $17 million guaranteed. The Ravens suck for his boss well get paid. They're like, we got to pay Justin Tucker. Something Bobby Thompson said yesterday when I had him on, Baker Mayfield has the inside track to being the Panthers' starting quarterback based on his strong camp. And Sam Darnold is available for trade. So we'll see how that goes. Um... So, Mackay Becton, 
the Jets think he might be out for the year as the MRI showed a more serious knee injury than they initially believed, and he can miss the year. That would be a brutal loss for the Jets. Mackay Becton is someone that they relied on or are relying on to be a key part of this Jets team. Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins is on track to play week one after missing all of last season with the torn ACL, so that is good news for the Ravens. Um, There's rumors out there that Odell might be interested in going to the Buffalo Bills as he made some interesting comment on Von Miller's Instagram post. Um... There's one more hockey thing we forgot to mention. Um, David Krejci back to the Brewers, one year, one million. So that's good for Boston. Um, so there's a lot of stuff about hard knocks coming out. Um, there's an epic Jamal Williams speech, and apparently the open is of Aiden Hutchinson singing a Michael Jackson song. So that's really f- funny. There was a fight at Giants camp as Cam Brown was pushed by offensive line coach Bobby Johnson, then punched in the head by John Feliciano during a scrum. Yikes. Like, is Joe Judge still there? Like, this is insane that this stuff is still happening with the Giants. Like, a lot of foolish things going on. They need to uh, clear that up. And I can't believe the offensive line coach pushed him. That's insane. Um, some basketball stuff, um, the biggest news of yesterday, um, Kevin Durant retrades his trade request, says he told Joe Psy that he needs to choose between himself and the Sean Mark steve Nash pairing. It's going to be very interesting to see what goes down, and this kind of came out of nowhere. And Joe Psy tweets that he will make decision and best interest of the team in light of the Kevin Durant latest request. So that is really interesting. Some Knicks players are spotted at NYC Pro AM. Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, and Obi Toppin. Um, The Celtics, Heat, and Raptors remain the most significant candidates to trade for Kevin Durant. So that is interesting. There's some drama going on between Paolo Banchero and DeJounte Murray. So, this was all going on in Pro AM. It was all because of a dunk, and it's still going on and on and on. And I wonder if this is going to carry over into the NBA season. Some WNBA news. Diana Taurasi out for the year due to a quad strain. That is a brutal loss for the Phoenix Mercury who are fighting for their lives to make the postseason. They're an eighth. I think they drop in the Liberty get in. That's my guess. Because I know Taurasi and Ionescu is so good she's going to carry New York in. Some big news Regarding television, um, the Big Ten is leaving ESPN as the conference is filing a deal with Fox, CBS, and NBC to broadcast football and basketball. That is insane news. Um, Brutal for ESPN. I wonder if um, any other conferences will eventually follow suit. This is big for NBC because... They have Big Ten and Notre Dame. Does this mean that Notre Dame's going to the Big Ten down the road? This is what this tells me. Because NBC, Notre Dame, and if the Big Ten picks up, or the NBC picks up the Big Ten, who also has Notre Dame, there's that connection now. And now um, CBS, um, obviously, um, they carry their basketball games. CBS has everybody for basketball, pretty much. And then, um, usually for for football, it's just the SEC. So, um, that is very interesting news, for sure. Some baseball news. Um, Matt Carpenter fractures his foot after hitting 
himself in the foot on a foul ball. Brutal loss for the Yankees. So many injuries. Um, and they still found a way to win last night, which is good. Um, and Matt Carpenter says he's holding out hope that he can rejoin the team for September stretch run. If he's back for September, that's a win. And then they have everybody back for October. So that's what the Yankees um, hope for. And Matt Carpenter's probably the biggest surprise on this team outside of Nestor Cortez because Carpenter wasn't even on the team to start the year and they signed him because of a couple injuries. And he was playing so well that they had to keep him in the lineup. Chicago Cubs making some moves on signing Frame Mill Reyes after the Guardians DFA'd him last week. And the Chicago Cubs are moving on from Jason Hayward. As Jed Hoyer says um, that Hayward won't be with the team next year as the Cubs owe $24.5 million for the final year of his contract in 2023. So... Um, that's not surprising. Hayward won the bigger free agent busts in recent baseball history and probably all of Chicago Cubs franchise history as well. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, yesterday was a winner with the over in the Cubs-Nationals game. Um. So today, I'm going to lay a half unit on the... So I went down the 7F and minus 118, the Cubs knots over again. But I'm sorry, like, 11's way too high for Cards Rocks. I know the Cards offense played so well in New York. And Nolan Arenado back in Colorado is a big deal. I just thought about that right now. But I don't trust the Rockies' offense. I know the Dodgers did it to me by themselves. But Miles Miklas is really good, but I don't know if the Cardinals can do it alone. So I'm going to lay a half unit on under 11 between the Rockies and the Cardinals for my best bet of the day. All right, that's it for today's show. I'll be back. Tomorrow, recapping all the games and looking ahead to everything for tomorrow. We'll go over the primary results that we discussed earlier. Um, We have the next golf tournament that we have to discuss. And news and notes and best bet as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.